remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? According to a number of political pundits and military experts, Donald Trump, your president, decision to assassinate Iran's general, Qasem Soleimani, could be the beginning of World War III and the ending of life as we all know it. This dude, I told you from the get, was unqualified to lead fifth graders out of their classroom to recess. This dude is the worst of the worst and it's no way that you can put somebody like that in position of that type of authority, that type of power, give him the damn codes to the war room and not expect that would be some type of grave consequences. This dude is a moron that you fools made president. Some of you fools, you're so excited, you're so caught up in your privilege that you'd rather see the whole country burn than to have somebody in position who has some sense, who has some competence, who can be a uniter and not a divider. Y'all think that it's going to be easy. Remember how easy you thought it was going to be when he attacked, when America attacked Iraq, you thought it was going to be a one night thing just like it was back in 90, what was it, 91, 92? When the first Iraq war took place, thought it was going to be easy. Thought you was going to go in there and just wipe it out one day, declare victory, throw up, put the flags up and, and claim the territory. Iran had different thoughts. They was not prepared for that guerrilla warfare. This is going to be a repeat. Don't think it won't be a bunch of beheading going on. It won't be a bunch of explosions happening. Not just abroad, but it'll be some happening right here in America. Americans, and, Americans are not as safe as they think they are. And that is because of a lot of these things that American uh politicians are involved in. Man, they do not care. The elite got somewhere to hide. They got bunkers. They're going in, man. They going they man, they going to lay low when they go down. Everybody else going to be pretty much exposed. And also something people have to think about. Imagine a world where American politicians are getting knocked off. That's not very difficult to do if you think about it. There's no way possible they can protect all of these politicians around America. You got politicians on uh, the, uh, the national level, state level, local level. We're talking about thousands of politicians. We're not just talking about the uh, people in Congress. They can't possibly, they can't even protect the people in Congress if somebody want to get at them. They can't even protect them. If the, somebody wanted to get at the president, they can't even really protect the president. And these are the type of people who don't mind dying. Like, they really do believe that they're just going to be able to go in there and kill those people, leaders like that, and ain't nothing going to happen. The problem is, is that people like Trump they get to throw the rock and hide their hands. Or get to throw a rock and say, sick them, boy. Go get them. You go get them. The working class person, the working class people are the ones who shed the blood. The people who come from poor communities around America, middle America, they're the ones who shed blood. 
They're the ones who are going to the cemetery. They're the ones who get the knock at the door. Trump don't get knocks at the door. His type, they don't get the knock at the door. They send you out to do the dirty work and then they give you a medal or say some nice things about you and that's enough for you to feel like you're working for your country. You forget all about policy. You forget all about what are you fighting for? Why are you out here? Is it worth it? Just be, and just like robots. Well, the president told me to go kill. I got to go kill. He told me to go fight. It reminds me of the guy who said that he killed Bob Marley. He said when he killed Bob Marley, he, he stuck, he got Bob Marley with a pen that he put in Bob Marley's uh, Nikes. I believe he said it was a pair of Nikes. I'm not sure. But he said it was a pair of tennis shoes that he gifted Bob Marley. He befriended Bob Marley. Uh, he passed himself off as a journalist. And he gifted Bob Marley with the shoes. And he said Bob Marley put them on. And when he put them on, Bob Marley said, ouch. And he said, I knew I had them then. See, that's when I knew I had them. But he said the reason why he did it was because he thought that he was doing his country a favor. He thought he was doing it for the betterment of the country because the higher-ups told him that. The people that were stroking the check told him, you're doing this for the country. And he said at the time when he did it, he didn't feel nothing. He thought he was doing it for the country. But as time passed, he realized that he had been bamboozled. And he felt sad that he actually did that when he realized how much people really loved Bob Marley and how much of a nice guy Bob Marley really was. See, Bob Marley invited him into his home and took him in, befriended him, everything. And he was like, man, he he didn't see this this grave danger that that America say that Bob Marley was. So this is how they do. They get the people who kind of slow the people who don't know, the people who might have some issues with their identity, and they go in on them and they scare everybody. Tell you the enemy over here, when really they over here puppeteering the whole time. They are the enemy. The enemy is within. But they're going to make you look over here or even look at somebody like me like I'm the enemy. I ain't something, not, not one bomb. To, uh, to, 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 to Iraq. I ain't bombed one place. I ain't picked up the phone and called to get not one, send one drone. I ain't even never seen a drone up close. But they swear to God that I'm the enemy, that I'm, I'm somehow a threat. I'm a threat to national security. Somehow. And it's one thing for them to say, it's a whole different story when you believe it. Not you, but him and her. It's crazy, man. Dude went out there and killed that man just so he can get reelected. He killed that man just so he can get some votes. He don't give a damn about Americans. He trying to get reelected. He saw an opportunity, he saw a soft target, and he went in. If it's really about preserving American life and the threats of American life, why aren't they doing anything to China? China sends defective toys and all kind of stuff over here where your children end up getting killed and choking on and all kind of stuff. Stuff is, ain't even regulated. Half stuff ain't even regulated that come from China. It ain't even safe to use, but... They take it in every, all the time. Ain't nobody, they ain't dropping nothing on China. They ain't dropping nothing on North Korea. They ain't dropping nothing on Russia. I wonder why. See, but this has far-reaching implications. And this whole thing to kick off a World War III, and I'm telling you this, mark my words, Trump would actually be proud if he was the one could start a World War III, because look, 
He's 70-something years old. He ain't got that many days left anyway. And it, even if a world a war don't take him out, that, that bad eating, that diet that he got will probably do the trick. He ain't got that much longer anyway, no matter what. So he don't care what happens to the rest of us. That's what y'all not understanding. Man. Brace yourself, family. Brace yourself, I'm telling you. Brace yourself. And look, y'all keep talking about Civil War and all of that. That, that World War III kickoff, a Civil War will be, that'll be the last thing you have to worry about. No more talk. What the haters talking about? Yeah.